This is a revision video for AQA GCSE Chemistry or Combined Science Unit 9, the chemistry of the atmosphere. Since 40% of the marks in your GCSE science are for pure factual recall, this is a summary video to allow you to check whether you actually know those facts listed in your specification. Once you've memorised these, you can move on to questions which ask you to apply or analyse those facts. For about the last 200 million years, the Earth's atmosphere has been relatively constant, and it's mainly consisted of nitrogen, which makes up approximately four-fifths or 80% of the Earth's atmosphere. There's also about 20% oxygen, but there are small amounts of other gases, including carbon dioxide, water vapour, and noble gases like argon. Evidence for the Earth's early atmosphere is limited because it formed about 4.6 billion years ago. If you're asked to talk about why we can't be certain what the Earth's atmosphere was originally like, you want to be talking about the lack of proof or the lack of evidence, not just saying, oh, there was nobody there to see. For the first billion years, Earth's surface was covered in volcanoes, and for that reason there were no oceans, because it was so hot that any water would immediately have evaporated. During this time, Earth's atmosphere was similar to Mars and Venus. The volcanoes produced huge amounts of carbon dioxide and nitrogen, but also smaller amounts of methane and ammonia. As the Earth cooled down and the first oceans formed, carbon dioxide began to dissolve in those oceans, so the amount of carbon dioxide went down. Carbon can be locked up in what we call carbon sinks, such as fossil fuels, peat bogs and sedimentary rocks like limestone. And the first organisms to start producing oxygen were algae. They did this by photosynthesis, and you hopefully know the word equation for photosynthesis, which looks like this, or the symbol equation, which we can balance with some sixes. This whole process began about 2.7 billion years ago, and about a billion years after that, or over the next billion years, higher plants started to evolve from the algae. A greenhouse gas is a gas that contributes to the greenhouse effect by absorbing infrared radiation. Three greenhouse gases are carbon dioxide, methane and water vapour. If there weren't any greenhouse gases at all, then it would be significantly colder on Earth and basically nothing would be able to survive. Shortwave radiation, like visible light, but also other shortwave radiation, like ultraviolet light, can penetrate the blanket of greenhouse gases in the Earth's atmosphere. When that radiation reaches the Earth's surface, the Earth absorbs it, and it then re-emits it as longer wave radiation. So this includes infrared radiation, but also things like radio waves and microwaves. And that longer wave radiation is less good at penetrating that blanket of greenhouse gases, so a lot of it stays in the Earth's atmosphere rather than being given back out into space, and therefore the Earth ends up warming up. Carbon dioxide levels are being increased by us burning fossil fuels, burning peat from peat bogs, and also by deforestation. So even though the process of deforestation isn't going to release a huge amount of carbon dioxide, what it is going to mean is that there are fewer trees taking in carbon dioxide, so overall the levels are going to rise. Amounts of methane in the atmosphere are increased by us farming cattle, by us growing rice, and also by landfill. As climate change occurs, we're going to see melting ice caps because of the raised temperatures, rising sea levels because all of that melted ice has to go somewhere, habitat destruction, desertification where new deserts form, and also hurricanes and extinction of certain species. A carbon footprint is the total amount of greenhouse gases that are emitted over the full life cycle of a product, service or event. Your personal carbon footprint could be increased by the amount of meat that you eat, flying in aeroplanes or driving cars. When we burn crude oil, or other fuels derived from crude oil, this can release carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, carbon particulates, sulphur dioxide, or various oxides of nitrogen. The carbon dioxide comes from the complete combustion of fuels that contain carbon, so where there is enough oxygen. Carbon monoxide and carbon particulates come from when there's incomplete combustion of those fuels. There's less oxygen available, so the products have less oxygen in them as well. Crude oil usually has sulphur impurities in it, so if those aren't removed, then when the oil or the fuel is burned, we also produce sulphur dioxide. And then because combustion engines get so hot, even though the nitrogen in the atmosphere is really quite unreactive, at a high enough temperature it will start to react with the oxygen in the atmosphere, and that's how we get these oxides of nitrogen. Acid rain is rain that has a pH of about 5 or below, and it's formed when carbon dioxide, sulphur dioxide, or nitrogen dioxide dissolve in the water that make up clouds. Global dimming is a phenomenon caused by carbon particulates, where there's sort of soot in the air that is reflecting back radiation, and this means that literally less of the sun's rays are able to reach Earth, and we're actually getting less light. 
And carbon monoxide is dangerous because it's toxic, because it irreversibly binds to the haemoglobin in your red blood cells. And it's colourless and odourless, so really hard to detect. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope that you found that a useful refresher of the key facts that you need to know for AQA GCSE Chemistry or Combined Science Unit 9. If you did find it useful, then don't forget to like and subscribe for more GCSE Chemistry videos coming soon.